Hi there, I'm Amy. Welcome to today's practice session. Please attach your shoulder rest and make sure your violin is all tuned. Let's get started. The very first thing I'd like you to do today is take a pencil and make one tally mark on each exercise that we finished yesterday. Starting with exercise number two. Let's play open D. Now, we are going to keep track of how many times we play each exercise and I want us to do each one for 10 days. Think about the first time you've ever gone to a place and the next day someone asks you, hey, have you been there before? And you say, yeah. And they say, how do you get there? And you think, uh, well, I, I think you go down this street um, and then I forget the name of the next one and then you turn right or is it left and you don't seem to know where you've gone or how to get there. So this is the same idea because if you went to that new place 10 days in a row and then someone asked you, hey, have you been to that place? You'd say, yeah, lots of times. And they'd say, well, how do you get there? And you'd say, you turn right on this street, and you turn left on this street, and you turn right on this street, and that's the third house on the right side. You'd know it exactly because you had done it 10 times. Same idea here. We want to play each exercise 10 different days in a row, if possible. So let's go back to exercise number two. Let's play open D. So set your violin on your shoulder, place your jaw in the chin rest, and hold on to the bout with your left hand. And we're still going to pluck because the exercise says pizzicato, which means plucking our string. Remember, we always pluck away from the area between the bridge and the fingerboard because later when our bow hair touches there, we don't want the oils, the natural oils of our skin to be on that because it'll get on the hair and make it to where the hair won't play anymore. So, we're going to play this five times through and we'll say everything only the first time that we play through. So we'll start in one, two, three, go. D, 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 rest. D, 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 rest. D, 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 rest. Second time, two, Quietly go. is what it really is symbolizing. So you've got two tally marks on Let's Play Open D. Now, let's head to Let's Play Open A. Five times through, we'll speak as we play just the first time through, and then we'll quietly play. We'll be quiet, but play nice and loud with your violin. So get your finger prepared away from the space between the fingerboard and bridge, and left hand on the back, Soft rest of the right hand, curled light fingers 
on top of the bow. And exercise number three, let's play open A. We'll speak the first time through. One, two, three, go. A, 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 rest. A, 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 rest. A, 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 rest. Second time, two, quietly go. second tally mark for let's play open A. Do you feel like you made any mistakes during either of those? If you did, that's okay. The most important skill you can develop when playing music is to act like it didn't even happen and just go on. Let's start with exercise number four now. Choose a team. We'll play it five times through. We'll speak it the first time and play quietly the rest of the time. All right. Placing your violin on your shoulder, your jaw is in the chin rest, your left hand is lightly holding the bat, soft curled fingers, positioning the hand away from the space where the bow will go later, starting prepared on your D string, ready to move to A after the rest. So, choose a team. Starting one, Two, three, go. D, 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 rest. A, 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 rest. D, D, A, A, D, 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 rest. Second time, two, quietly go. Place our second tally mark on twos a team. All right, exercise five at Piero's door. Speaking first, playing five times through. Violin on your shoulder, left hand lightly on the bout, right finger softly curved, resting on top of the bout on the face of the violin. 
starting with our finger positioned on D and ready to speak this first time through. One, two, three, go. sure there are two tally marks above at Piero's door. And remember that when I say the word quietly, I just mean don't speak. It's important to play pretty loudly because that helps build your confidence. All right, moving on. We see a yellow box here that talks about the treble clef. Get yourself familiar with the names of the notes with lines going through them and get yourself familiar with the names of the notes that have spaces. Get used to the time signature right now. That four on top of a four means four quarter notes per measure. And we now have a double bar that we see at the end of each exercise, signifying that it is the end of that exercise or a piece of music. So let's go to number six. Jumping jacks, we'll play it five times through. We'll speak it the first time through, and then we'll be quiet while our instruments are nice and strong and loud the rest of the time. Violin on your shoulder, softly wrapped around the bat, soft curl of the fingers, ready to start on our D string, away from where the bow will be later. Starting in one, two, three, go. D, 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 rest. A, 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 rest. D, D, A, A, D, 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 rest. Second time. Two, three, go. there are two tally marks above jumping jacks. 
Moving on to exercise seven, mix them up. Violin on your shoulder, hand lightly on the bat, soft curl of your right hand, placing the finger ready on a D. Get ready to move right away to the A string for the second note. We'll speak first, starting in one, two, three, go. D, A, D, rest. A, D, A, rest. D, A, D, A, D, 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 rest. Second time, two, quietly go. means go back to the beginning and only after you've played that line or that piece of music both times through then you've played the whole thing once. Then it mentions counting. We'll go back now to saying one and two and in our minds as we're playing the notes and thinking of the rests. And remember that in order to speak this Instead of saying one and two and, we're going to say D and D and, rest and, rest and. That way we're incorporating the counting as well as remembering what the notes are called and what rests look like. So, since this repeats already, we're going to play a complete total of three real times through the whole exercise, meaning we'll play what feels like six times, but that's really only three because it requires playing twice through the line to make one complete exercise. So, exercise eight, called count carefully, we'll say letters or rest with an and in between. The first whole time through, that means we'll say it through two times through the line because of the repeat sign. Then the other times we play the exercise, we won't speak anything, but we're thinking all of those same things in our minds. We're quiet and our violin is playing strong. So, violin on your shoulder, jaw in the chin rest, hand lightly on the bat, right fingers softly curled, placing your finger on D, away from where the bow will play later. Number eight, count carefully. Starting in one and two and three and go. D and D and rest and rest and A and A and rest and rest and D and rest and A and rest and D and A and D and repeat. D and D and rest and rest and A and A and rest and rest and D and rest and A and rest and D and A and D and rest. Second time, two. 
quietly go. Time two, three, go. Were you thinking D and, D and in your mind? You'll get better at that later if you didn't already. Make sure there are two tally marks above count carefully. And we'll move on to number nine, essential elements quiz. So just like before, because this has a repeat and we'll play a total of three times, it'll feel like we've played six times through the line and the first whole time through, we're counting out loud and speaking out loud the letters, the ands, the rests, everything, and repeat. So, violin on your shoulder, jaw in the chin rest, left hand lightly on the bat, soft curl the right fingers, ready to pluck away from where the bow belongs. Number nine, essential elements quiz. Starting in one and two and three and go. D and rest and A and rest and A and A and D and rest and A and D and rest and rest and D and A and D and repeat. D and rest and A and rest and A and A and D and rest and A and D and rest and rest Second time, two, quietly go. Time, two, three, go. Make sure there are two tally marks above essential elements quiz. Now we're going to turn the page. At the top of this page, we have our yellow box entitled Shaping the Left Hand D string notes. So, step one is to shape your left hand as shown. It says, Be certain your palm faces you. I'm going to let my palm face you. Zero means open string. That means no fingers are touching it. All along, we've been playing open D and open A so far. Number one means first finger. That's your pointer finger, your index finger. Number two is your second finger, your middle finger. Number three is your third finger, your ring finger. And number four is your little pinky, your fourth finger. And so notice in the diagram that shows you the strings of a violin and on the D string it shows a one, a first finger, 
as making a letter E because we just climb up the alphabet, sort of, in the music alphabet. So after the open D with nothing touching it, we place our first finger, we're going to call that about an inch away from what's called the nut, where the strings touch the instrument back here, where it makes that little bend. About an inch away is the note called E. If we placed our second finger, we'll call it another inch away. That's called F sharp. Don't worry about the sharp yet. We'll get to that later, and you'll understand why it's a sharp later. And then the three, third finger, we slide it right against second finger to place it right smack up against second finger to make a G. F sharp and a G are very, very close together. So we want no space at all between the fingers. So, it says down in step two, bring your hand to the fingerboard, which is the dark piece of wood. Place your fingers on the D string, keeping your hand shaped as shown below. Be sure your first finger forms a square with the fingerboard. And so you can see my little square up here. As your wrist is relaxed and straight. Sometimes when people don't know any better, they'll hug the back of the fingerboard, the neck of the violin, with as much of their palm as they can. They feel that they've got to use their hand like that to hold the instrument up. So I'd like you to practice something so that we don't get into this habit. Instead, we want our wrist away from the instrument. Most of our palm, in fact, our entire palm away from the neck. The only spots in your hand that are touching are the knuckle inside your index finger and then the tip of your thumb and the tips of any fingers you've placed there. So I just did what I want you to do to practice to learn how to not knead your hand. So we've been holding the bow with our left hand all along to help learn to hold the instrument up. You're developing your neck muscles so that they can eventually do this. You want to be able to hold your instrument without your hand. That way, when it is time to place your hand on the instrument, which is now, then you won't feel like you're holding your instrument with that hand. You'll only feel like you're holding your instrument with your jaw and your shoulder put together. So that's an important skill to do. So at least for a few seconds, I want you to try that with me. So shoulder rest on your shoulder, left side jaw into what's called your chin rest. I wish it was called a jaw rest. And you can start by holding the bow or the neck for just a moment. And then on three, we're going to let go and hold for three. So start in one, two, three, let go, holding one, two, three, touch. Even if you just practice that for a few seconds a day, you'll get better and better at it. So start with that little bit of hold with your jaw and shoulder, and then slide your hand back, letting the inside of your knuckle lightly touch the side of the neck and the side inside of your thumb lightly touch the other side of the neck. And then feel for about an inch away from the nut, placing a finger down for E, another inch away, place a finger down for F sharp, slide your third finger down right against F sharp finger, second finger, so that you can play a G. Now, we want to get used to the fingers all being down together, learning the strength of letting all the fingers being down together. So, keep all three fingers on the fingerboard, and let's read G. So, just hold the hand in place like that. Set your violin in your lap for now, trying to keep your three fingers there so they learn how to stay there. And let's speak this together. Notice there is not a repeat. So, starting with let's read G. Starting in one, two, three, go. 
G and G and G and rest and G and G and G and rest and G 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 and rest. Good. Now let's play as we speak. Violin on your left shoulder, jaw and the chin rest. Have your wrist away from the neck. Have all three fingers touching the fingerboard. Get your right hand softly curved and ready for pizzicato. And we'll start playing and speaking together. Then we'll play another four times without speaking for a total of five. Starting in one and two and three and go. G and G and G and rest and G and G and G and rest and G 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 and rest. Second time to quietly go. Last time, two, three, go. Great job. Let's put one tally mark on Let's Read G. Do you feel like you heard any buzzing happening while you were playing? Most of the time, that just means you need to press harder. It takes time to develop strength in our fingers, in our neck, sitting tall. Even though it doesn't appear that when we watch someone play the violin, they look so relaxed and they make it look so easy. That'll come over time. You'll develop the strength and it won't feel like you're working so hard. But for now, just do your best to firmly press your fingers against your string. The next yellow box talks about a sharp. It looks like a tic-tac-toe symbol or a number symbol. A sharp raises the sound of notes and remains in effect for the entire measure. Notes without sharps are called natural notes. So, all the notes we've been playing so far, the D, the A, and now the G, those are called natural. But we don't want to have to say that word after every single natural. We don't want to have to say D natural, D natural, D natural, A natural, A natural, A natural. So we just say D or A or now a G. In this case, we're starting by learning F sharp because in the world of music, it's a pretty common note for a violin player to play. So that's why we're starting with F sharp rather than F natural. And so that's why there's that space between our E note and our F sharp note. Because we want it to be further apart, meaning a higher sound. So, if you had all three fingers on your violin, all we're doing is a small amount taking away the third finger by lifting it off. I still like to keep my third finger connected to my second finger so that in the future when we're playing songs, which is not too far away, when we're playing songs that have G's and F sharps and then G's again, by keeping my third finger very close against my second finger, all I have to do is make a tiny little sliding motion down and I'm back to my G. With your hand still holding on to F sharp, set your violin in your lap for now, 
and let's speak what we're about to play. When we speak F sharp, it's like we said F and. So we still have that good counting rhythm going, but instead of saying and, we're going to say sharp. So beginning on let's read F sharp, using the word F and sharp instead of F and. But when we say rest, we'll go back to saying and. One time through, speaking only. One and two and three and go. F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and F sharp, 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 rest. Very good. Let's speak and play. Hopefully you've kept your two fingers on the fingerboard. Your wrist is lightly away from the fingerboard holding the instrument with your shoulder and your jaw, soft curl of the right fingers, resting on the face of the instrument, and ready to position our finger on the D string, but it'll sound like an F sharp because we have our two fingers an inch apart. Starting in one and two and speak and go. F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and F sharp, 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 rest. Nice job. Second time, two, quietly go. Another thing that might cause a buzzing sound is to have long fingernails. So be sure to trim your fingernails so that you can make the room for the very, very tip of the skin to touch the string. That'll help you press down much more firmly with the right part of your finger. Let's go to exercise number 12. Speaking first, but have your fingers in the shape of a G with all three fingers down. And while we're speaking this without playing, be lifting your third finger away from the string, but keeping it in contact with the second finger so that when we say G again, all you have to do is slide it right down against the second finger. And it's easy to do if you've kept it there the whole time, pressing against your second finger. So this one has a repeat, so we'll speak everything while feeling the fingers move along the instrument, just that tiny movement of the third finger, either staying down on the string or a small lift up. And again, when you get to F sharps, the word sharp is replacing the word and. But on the other notes and rests, we will say the word and. So, both times through because of the repeat, number 12, speaking first and feeling the instrument by using your fingers without playing. Starting in one and two and three and go. 
G and G and G and rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and G and G and F sharp, F sharp, G and F sharp, G and rest and G and G and G and rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and G and G and F sharp, F sharp, G and F sharp, G and rest. Great. Now, let's lift up our instruments. We've got our three fingers ready. Our jaws and the chin rest. Making sure the wrist is away from the neck because you're able to hold between your shoulder and your jaw. Soft curl the right hand fingers. Position the finger onto the D string. But with left hand fingers down, we've got our G ready. Speaking and playing both times through because of the repeat. And then we'll play a complete total of three times, which feels like six times through. Speaking the first whole time, starting in one and two and three and go. G and G and G and rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest. G and G and F sharp, F sharp, G and F sharp, G and rest and G and G and G and rest and F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, rest and G and G and F sharp, F sharp, G and F sharp, G and rest. Second time, two and three and go. mark on liftoff. Starting tomorrow, we'll begin on exercise two again. Thanks so much for being part of my practice session. Knowing that you're out there practicing this with me makes this a lot of fun. I hope you'll join me really soon. Bye.